we continue to our introduction to the different elements of QI now and dive into the world of measurement. We use measurements every day and depend on them for our societies and economies to function. Just now, for example, we were dependent on all our clocks running at the same speed to be able to join back right at the time for the next session on metrology. I'm happy to hand over the screen now to my dear colleague Lilia from Mexico. Lilia, I hope you are there and the screen is yours. Thank you so much, Vera. I am here. <laughs> uh, yes, as my colleague introduced me, I'm a advisor at GPQI Country Component Mexico, and I am very happy to welcome you to this segment about metrology measurement as a key foundation for trade and innovation. And I would like to give a very warm welcome to our distinguished speaker, who already joined us yesterday, Dr. Frank Linusch from the German National Metrology Institute, the PTB. Uh, Dr. Linisch, he studied electrical engineering in Braunschweig and Valencia from 1988 to 1993 and has a PhD in electrical breakdown of combustible gas gases. He has been working at the PTB since 1994. He managed a working group explosion protected drive systems from 2003 to 2016 and from 2016 to 2020, he headed the PTB's explosion protection in sensor technology and instrumentation department and conformity assessment sector for explosion protection. Since 2021, he is responsible for the Division 9 legal and international metrology. His activities um, um, include representing the interests of the PTB in various international organizations such as OIML, COOMET, IEC, IECX, European Commission, and UNECE Working Party. In this presentation, we will learn more about the important role of metrology at the national and international level and the link between recent developments and the science of measurements. Dr. Linisch, thank you so much for being here. The floor is yours. Yes, thank you. Thanks very much, Lilia, for, for the introduction and for inviting me. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, welcome to this presentation about um, metrology measurement as a key foundation for trade and innovation. Um, as you have heard, my name is Frank Lienisch and I'm responsible for the Division 9, its legal and international metrology here in the PTB in Germany. So metrology, the science of measurement and its application, is one of the fundamental pillars of an efficient and effective quality infrastructure. So for example, we can specify and value products only if, we, if the measurements are accurate and comparable like exact size and weight. Everybody knows these are very two important factors to define your body mass index. Just a small so, uh, joke. So we will now hear a more technical uh, presentation if you compare this to the, to the other ones. Before I will go into these technical things, I would like to um, start with a short history of the system or of the PDB. The PDB was founded in 1887, so it's close to 135 years old. And we are older than the IEC. They started in 1906 or ISO, 1926, the International Standardization Organization. So the first president, it was Hermann von Helmholtz, was a scientist. But the impulse of the Metrology Institute came from Werner von Siemens, Werner Siemens from the industry. Mr. Siemens saw the need to have an independent governmental institute to create an intergovernmental cooperation with respect to measurements. For Siemens, the electrical value were very, very important. He saw the benefit to combine the industry with the science. Also very important was to include the legal metrology because the calibration office of each states were needed for the daily work a comparable basic basis. On the first technical committee, just an example of IEC, it was TC2, and they dealt with electrical machines, and this was also very important for Mr. Siemens. So, why do we need metrology? 
Methodology can be interpreted with safe and reliable measurements. Metrology enables fair trade. So very important, you get what you paid. It's is an, of course, very important question. It protects the society and consumers, for instance, with threshold for the environment and informs political decision-making, like correct information about the global temperature increase. The easiest way to compare measurements is by using constants, as you can see it here in the middle of the presentation. For example, the SE value for the current, the ampere, uh, instead of defining the force between two parallel wires, today we just count the number of electrons jumping over a bridge. And this is just an example how we can realize these values with constants. Yes, measurements with high precision enable innovation. Better efficiency open new market and can be with this aspect climate friendly. The competitive competitive edge owing to precision if you look to mechanical engineering processes. So new techniques and metrology should be seen in conjunction with these technology transfer. So bring these measurements to the industry is the question. Now some facts about the PDB. Um, the PTB, the National Metrology Institute, is a higher federal authority within the portfolio of the Federal Ministry of Economy, Affairs and Energy, BMWI. This is in the same way like Siemens proposed 135 years ago to guarantee independence. So metrology on the highest level is very expensive. Um, I would, so you, our budget uh, you can see it here, it's close to 250 million euro. And this is also including uh, 70 million euros third party funding. More than 2,100 employees, including more than or a lot of more than 200 PhD candidates and 60% scientifics and technological research demonstrates a high level of science, which is necessary to run such an institute. The other important topic is the knowledge and technology transfer to the industry, society and politics. What we do with publications, 600 a year more or less, patents, licenses and tasks assigned by laws and directives. This is the input we gave back to the society and to the politics. To represent and coordinate the interest um, of the stakeholders, to the stakeholders, whatever you would like to say, we are active in more than 1,200 boards, international and national. So it is a board, like you have heard this from the standardization organization, for instance. It's just an example. So metrology, we see, or we believe, the key pillar of an efficient and effective quality infrastructure needs a starting point, and this is the meter convention. The meter convention defines the seven units of CSI system we are using as a basis. The system represents the global metrology infrastructure and is valid worldwide. Good news, the physical laws are independent from political orientations. So many member states are included. Some of the associated or designated uh, some are uh, associated or designated, so we have both of them. In total, the system covers 97.6% of the global economy, so it's really a huge number. So the pillar of international quality, quality infrastructure uh, can be demonstrated with this. With this. It's the basis of a global trade. So as my president Professor Ulrichs likes to say is no nation can prosper without a solid international base, base for measurement. Here a picture of him. The other very important topic is international cooperation. So once the definition of measurements are defined, the international organization can use it for further activities. And as you can see it here, we have OEML, it's for legal metrology. Uh, 
they create and present recommendation how to test and certify products. For instance, uh, they have recommendation 66 for length measurements instruments or recommendation 76 for non-automatic weigh weighing instruments. Based on it, an international certificate is possible. So COMET, as another example, coordinates peer assessment to ensure the correctness of CMC entries to the National Metrology Institute within East Europe and Asia National Metrology Institutes. For new challenges, the EU has implemented and funds research collaboration. Within the PDB, a group coordinates the international technical cooperation and brings the idea to the quality infrastructure or idea of quality infrastructure to the world. So in the moment we coordinate about 55 projects in 85 countries. And I would say this is really a success. So if we go a bit more into the details of uh, our activities. So the functionality of the national metrology infrastructure can be demonstrated with this slide here. So based on the unit and time act, the PDB realized the national standards. And this is the top of the pyramid in Germany. What you can see here, the SI units. The national standards are the starting point for a legal industrial metrology. The accredited calibration laboratories, which the number is about five, close to 500, are connected to this national standard, what you can see here on the right side. And they give them to the next level of working or company standards. So we are starting here on the top, we have the accredited calibration labs, and this is the next level of standards. And then they are coming to the in-house calibration labs, which are the working labs or so-called company standards. Always done by calibration. On the ground of the pyramid, the industry used it for the production and for the products. This is here. So on the left side here is the legal metrology. So the verification uh, calibration authorities need the link to the national standards to control measurements with respect to trade with the society. So by energy, electricity, petrol, gas, for instance, and everybody wants to get what he's paying for. So we have about six, 160 million uh, devices in this field. So it's a huge number and it is a lot of work for these groups to work together. So what are the new topics in metrology, what we see? Um, so um, for national and international metrology and quality infrastructure. So we see societal uh, challenges are the energy tra transition, environment and climate change, medical and quantum technology, and this always in conjunction with the digital transformation. For this fee ca for these five key elements we have implemented, horizontal steering committees to integrate the departments of the PDB. And now let me give you some examples. So all new challenges of metrology and the key and the quality infrastructure will include aspect of digitalization. So we see four key elements for that. The first one is digital transformation of metrology services. In this case, we are talking about the DCC, the Digital Calibration Certificate, or the DCOC, Digital Certificate of Conformity, and so on and so on. The second one is the analysis of big data. So sensor networks, we will see them in the future in smart cities, in energy grids. We are talking about millions of sensors with some correlation. Artificial intelligence will be needed to handle all these complex structures. The third, simulation and virtual measurement devices. Everything what is around digital twins, you can use for whatever you want, like predictive maintenance. And the last one, also very important, is communication system in digitalization. So we have learned with the COVID-19 uh, thematic that e-learning, coaching and training is a very good element to bring all the knowledge we have to the other people and to our partners. 
So both the legal and industrial methodology is affected. It means that the measurement devices, calibration or certified or under the control of calibration offices will have a digital pass, so a digital calibration certificate, digital certificate of conformity, and, and so on and so on. Important is that it is it, that it has to be machine readable. So it makes no sense to have it just in uh, as a PDF or something like that. A digital world with billions of sensors calls for trust in the measurement values created by, by metrologies. This is a quote of Professor Ulrich. Some more actual examples of metrology for industry and society. For the energy transition, wind is one of the uh, wind is one of the building block and with 10% of the global market very important for the industry we have here in Germany. Offshore and onshore installation with different sensors have to be considered. Torque measurements devices up to five mega newton meter. You can see the next in the picture the next is a new test rig we have implemented. So chemical processes plans, for instance, are depending on correct measurements for heat and cold. It is also important for smart cities and buildings. The German thermal energy meter industry share close to 50% of global market. Another very important topic, solar cells modules, another building block for the energy transition. We have in the moment in Germany close to 2 million installed. This is a huge number. And with this installed power, this is about 54 gigawatts, what we produce 50 terawatt hour a year. And if we are talking about 10 cent a kilowatt hour, we are talking about 5 billion euro. So you can see how important it is that you get what you paid. So 50% of the global industry has its traceability to the PDB. The next topic, mobile communication and data transfer for the next, next or let's say actual generation with 5G requires metrology. The German industry offers 50 to 60% of the test equipment globally. Overall, a reduced measurement uncertainty signifies higher return of invest and a comp competitive advantage for the industry. This is what we are doing actually, what is coming next, what we see. So one of the next challenges for metrology is select mobility. Again, the question of for the society, you get what you paid. So what is the real cost you have to pay to drive 100 kilometers with a car? So you can see here, we have questions around the charging station. This one has to be verified and certified. The battery here inside the car has a relatively high value and has to be specified with respect to depreciation. So to determine the value of a used, of a used car. Safety aspects will also take place. The state of health or the state of safety are the factors of interest and they have to be measured. And of course, you need some traceability for that. Burning batteries, what we have time by time, will destroy the trust in this new technology. On the other hand, the manufacturer of the car will guarantee the performance of the car, so the possible range with a clear specification for a fair trade. To develop the performance of an electric car, losses are of major interest to increase the efficiency of it. You can see it here with the ETA as a symbol of it. So various sensors in such a car has to function correctly and also autonomous driving is under consideration and metrology standardization and regulation has to support it. Metrology for hydrogen, for the hydrogen economy. Now I would like to switch from blue, what we have seen before to green because the energy transition is only possible with hydrogen and this has to be green. The amount of energy industrial con um, an industrial country like Germany needs is very, very high. Compared to oil and gas, the infrastructure has to be adapted to hydrogen. International cooperation will be necessary to import hydrogen for our country here in Germany. The quantity, purity are directly linked to the value of it. 
the process will need quantities like pressure, temperature, and liquid properties. Safety is an important question for this society. We have to use hydrogen in the way as we do it today with oil and gas. For instance, you try to you are going to a petrol station and you have a hydrogen car and your hydrogen car will be tanked with 700 bars. It's a new challenge for the people. So metrology, standardization and regulation has to support it. Another topic, last example is medical services. The importance to metrology started a long time before the COVID-19 pandemic we have had the last one and a half year, years. It was always a question whether the information, for instance, your blood test can be guaranteed and therefore to enable a correct therapy. With COVID-19, the public attention increased a lot and therefore we have an, many new questions to answer. Target genes are under consideration. That's, that's what you can see here. As you can see it here. And to specify it, the National Metrology Institute uh, compare their techno technology and results. So what we have done here with PDB, NIST, and another partner. So international cooperation will be inter elementary. Altogether, it helps to fight against the pandemic. Okay, so the quality infrastructure is a key pillar for a global economy. I try to demonstrate it with this slide. Each participant, metrology, testing, inspection, standardization, certification and accreditation, they have its function to guarantee the quality of various products. The international system consists of various organizations like IRF, ILEC, IEC, ISO, VTO, OEML and BPM, just to say some of them. So all of them, they have to go hand in hand to guarantee a fair trade, to guarantee quality and to have a safe society. So now I would like to stop my presentation uh, and thanks for your attention. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Linish, for this very interesting and insightful presentation the importance of metrology as a foundation of trade and innovation but also um, all these challenges that metrology is facing due to digitalization this is very interesting and um, we have received so many interesting questions also from our virtual audience and i would like to address some of them to you um the first one is um they say trade is globalized. Industrial measurements are crucial for successful and safe production, as you mentioned. Uh, what role does international cooperation in metrology play in, in these regards? Somehow you mentioned it earlier, but maybe you can elaborate a little bit, bit more. Okay, um, if you go back thousands of years and you start trading, then of course you have to compare your product with the product of the other person. So no comparison can be done only with one person. So trade is elementary to cooperate to one thing between persons. And therefore the international cooperation, um, without uh, international cooperation, no trade is fair or possible. And therefore we have a very strong interest in cooperation. As you can see, it uh, demonstrated with the last, last slide, the cooperation with uh, BIPM or OEML and all the others. So without comparison, there is no trade possible and the trade has to be fair. Um, and yeah, this is uh, maybe the easiest answer for your question. Thank you so much. And um... Maybe on, on digitalization, this other topic that I mentioned earlier in my in my comments, uh, it's very important. We are we're facing a revolution everywhere in the industry, in the commerce, and everything. So um, yesterday, you you mentioned also the digital metrology process, and also you mentioned it a little bit during your presentation today. Um, could you elaborate on what benefits for metrology uh, you perceive uh, digitalization offers? Yeah, so one example uh, also from yesterday was if we were talking about 
billions or millions of sensors and to handle all these sensors and to understand how they work together, you will need digitalization. This is not possible for this. Maybe to make it easier, if you just have one sensor, then of course the question is, what is the interest of the various stakeholders to this information? Um, one example was um, the digital nameplate or the digital pass port of, of a of a product. So if it is possible to, to connect or to get information of a product, be, for instance, uh, information of, of the calibration results or um, some information coming from the certificate uh, of conformity, then of course, everybody has a fair possibility to get this information. And if you are looking to these, um, these processes, then we have we can divide this into two processes. One process is the so-called pre-market process. So the manufacturer is um, communicating with test institute and test houses. Maybe they need type examination certificates or whatever. Then of course, it will come to the market. The market surveillance has uh, a deep interest. Uh, what about these information are on these uh, or available for this product. And then of course, if it is once in the market, then there's a lot or high interest of these of the society to get special information. For instance, um, if you have trouble with the products, you need some replacement or spare parts or information about what these product can offer, then of course it would be very, very good if they could get these information um, because of digitalization. Therefore, we will need um, what we also have discussed yesterday, maybe um, a metrology cloud for, for our field, or what uh, Mr. Schnorr explained also is Gaia-X is a possibility to have a, um, a, yeah, to have the possibility where we can share our data. Um, this is, of course, an interest normally for, for all participants and stakeholders uh, around products and services. Yeah, thanks. Thank you so much. And one last question, because time is unfortunately coming up. So um, one last question would be, uh, how can stakeholders from diverse sectors could get involved and participate in current uh, topics of interesting interest regarding metrology? Yeah, the, um, of course, it's, it is a bit an open question because nobody knows what kind of new services we will see. Uh, but of course it can help in, in some cases. An example, if you have a product and you will need a software update for that. The question is how can you handle this software update? Normally, uh, if you have a car, you have to go to the garage and they will make the software update. If this would be available um, in the internet or how, however, then of course this has some extremely advantages if uh, um, if this is available. So the, the user, they can have an easier access to that and maybe new services will come up that if the car manufacturer will open the software for them uh, with new services like maintenance and inspections. Maybe there are some special companies seeing that the tire is, uh, is at the end of, his, uh, of the lifetime and so on. So I would say you can have hundreds of ideas if you are open these um, to the to the market and to give the the people possibilities to create to create new services. Um, therefore, it is an interest of many many people. It's the market surveillance, it's the verification bodies, the users, are very important, and so on. So I believe um, we will see what what happens. Um, so to give all these answers is more or less not possible. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks again, Dr. Linish, for being with us today and sharing your, your expertise. And unfortunately, our time is up. I'm sure we could still be talking a lot about metrology and especially all these new challenges that that um, we are facing on the on the matter. And maybe just to to do a, a wrap up, you know, among the, the greatest takeaways I take from this segment would be that metrology is the basis for scientific, technological, and industrial development. Another one would be that as part of the QI system, metrology provides the fundamental quantitative basis of measurements for the system to function, which is 
paramount. And just as technology and innovation advance, metrology must also adapt and develop for this international and for this international cooperation is also uh, fundamental. And then I would just finish um, with a very quick reflection on the challenges you mentioned, Dr. Linish, about the the um, energy transition, the environment, climate change, medical, and quantum technologies, and um, how they are all um, influenced and affected by digitalization. And about this other um, reflection on how um, a solid international um, uh, vase is needed for uh, quality infrastructure. So I would leave it like this, and I would uh, just go back to my colleague Vera. Thank you so much.